Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spotlight, episode number eight. This is the weekly show of the Paris Art and Movie Awards. And I'm not saying bonsoir Paris because we moved the time a little bit later in the day. We are going to try different times to see what works best for you guys to connect to the live show. So if I was to say uh, good, I would should be saying good night for us because it's 1 a.m. in Paris right now. So I'm just going to say good evening, Los Angeles. Um, we are going to stay weekly and we have this time change. And uh, today we're going to talk a little marketing in movies with our guest. But first, welcome everybody. My guest today is a director, producer, writer, is a Los Angeles um, director, filmmaker, and he was selected and he won in 2019 Best Movie Poster at the Paris Art and Movie Awards. We created this category along with Best Trailer a few years ago because we know that it's so very important to have good elements, marketing elements, when you get a movie to knock at the doors of distribution companies. You need to create a package that's going to be ready for distribution companies and partners and investors to take a look at. And the best you are at that, the better results, the better feedback you're going to have from these people. So the winner of the best poster for 2019 at the Paris Art and Movie Award was Brandon Slagle. Brandon, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you for taking the time for being with us uh, today. And uh, you were telling me before we started this interview that you are in your car because that's the only place in your production company that no one is going to bother you, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm in my parking lot because the last time I did one of these that had video, even though I had my uh, office door closed, someone walked right in. And uh, Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it kind of disrupted the flow and I stopped and was doing a bunch of weird, weird hand signals and I don't want to do that to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for the consideration. So, um, you had this big movie, The Dawn, which was a horror movie and you won best poster in 2019 at the Paris Art and Movie Awards. I explained yes. it in the introduction. We created this category because it is, it has become so very important to have a good poster when you create the package around your movie uh how did it help you and how did you create that poster so um the poster for the dawn is actually the marketing materials that we created when we were selling the movie um a lot of people you know by the time you see a poster um you know hit uh, the public view i guess you would call it it's usually a poster that a third party company has made or the distributor made themselves or so on and so forth but this actual poster we had created while we were still in production of the movie when we went to sell it um and uh what was interesting about that is a lot of times like i was saying the uh distribution company will change it they uh every company that's picked it up basically used a different version of this same poster uh so i guess it worked i guess it did it it did its job so it did a job by uh, getting you into uh, in the door, into the meetings to get the distribution companies. And the poster was so good. Most of the distribution companies you've been signing with kept this poster on or one other um, side of it or one other use of it. Yeah. Correct. And actually, um, this poster, this exact poster, the way you're showing it now, was used for our theatrical run uh, through Vertical Entertainment. And um, then... For uh, DVD and um, VOD, uh, VOD was through Vertical and DVD was through Lionsgate. They took the same image. Um, I believe they put more, they accentuated the rosary and put a red image, behind, uh, red coloring behind that. And the reason that they yeah. did that is because you know when you're scrolling through iTunes or you're walking down Walmart, um, just you know certain colors and certain juxtapositions pop oh, out, wow. and so. Yeah. They took the same poster, which looked great in the theater lobby. It looked awesome. Um, I was happy that we saved a lot of money doing it ourselves. Um, <laughs> but so they took that main image of the nun and put red behind it uh, for the DVD and the VOD, and it, it popped. You know, you'd walk down the uh, Walmart aisle and look down, and, and there it is. It, it jumps right out at you. And it's so important because, you know, there's any given week, there's, you know, 30, 40 new releases, and you need something to catch your eye, especially yeah. if you don't 
have Robert Downey Jr. or somebody in your cast. Uh, you have to give them a reason to something to 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 get their attention. I had the exact same feedback from the, one of the distribution companies I've worked with with one of my own movies, and they had a very different image for iTunes because yeah. they needed something as an independent film that would be kind of catch the eye when people scroll down the, the homepage of iTunes because you have right. such competition right now. You need a poster that's going to be true to the movie and that's going to make people click on the movie yeah. so that they can rent it or watch it. And you said that poster, you created it um, uh, at home, I mean, in your own production company. So yeah. who's the designer and uh, what's your process with that? Well, she doesn't like... Uh to say it, but it was actually my partner in uh, the production company for this movie, uh, Devony Penn. Uh, we own, um, we produced uh, with another partner, Ryan Kaiser, um, this movie under Jaguar Cinema, but her and I own a company called Jaguar Motion Pictures. Um, mm -hmm. And she ends up doing at least the, the original initial comps of the art that we use. Um, and this one just happened to be one where whatever she did really worked and she knocked it out of the park um, on her own. Did the poster, so you said something very interesting, I want to go back to that, uh, that you had the poster during production. So the movie was not finished and you already had the marketing package to try right. to pre-sell the movie based, I guess, on the pitch and maybe a trailer and maybe the first footage you had, correct? Right. And I should I should clarify, um, it was made during post production. So you know we don't want to take years upon years for every movie. So while we were still finishing uh, mixing the movie, the poster was made um, and sent around. Uh, our, our our rep for it, Throughline Films, liked it. They didn't change it. And uh, Josh at Vertical loved it too. And obviously, you know, like I was saying, they used uh, different variations of it. Um, I think, you know, if you look at the U UK, in uh, Russia, in uh, I think South Africa, in Australia, it's all a small, it's it just small tweaks that they made in each small territory. Small details. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you mentioned Josh, Josh Spector. Yeah. He was he was a judge at the Paris Art and Movie Awards. I don't remember right. the, the year. I think it was the year before you or the year after you. Right. So a small world, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great yeah. guy. Um, what about the festival run you had with the film itself? Uh, yeah. Did you did you win? Did you have you been selected to a lot of festivals? What was your festival strategy? Yeah, um, that's something that more uh, Devony and Ryan handled. Um, while we were in post for this movie, I actually did for hire a, a directing job for a, an action movie called Attack of the Unknown, which is action sci-fi. Um, so they handled most of the submissions through Film Freeway. Um, and I think mm -hmm. it played in South Africa, uh, you guys, obviously, and um, I think Brazil and a few other places. Um, uh, some of the were I think we won uh, Best Writing in Shock Fest, which is in uh, Las Vegas, which I think was a month or two before uh, the movie actually came out, which is a little over a year ago. Shock um, Fest, I think you've been yeah. winning Best Actress, uh, Audience Choice, Best Screenplay, Best Picture, and you've been nominee, uh, nominated for Best Director and for Best Cinematography. That's That Sounds was quite right. a festival yeah. for you. Yeah. And also we played the Catalina Island Film Festival, which is normally you know something one. for more, I guess, art house type films, which is on Catalina <laughs> Island for those who don't. Uh, no, it, it's about 30 minutes uh, by boat uh, from Marina del Rey or, or Long Beach. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that was great. You know, we didn't get nominated for anything, but it, it didn't matter. It was a great experience. Yeah, it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you don't need to win the festival or it's just an experience in itself to be there exactly. uh, and, and to experience it, to live, to live it. Um, yes. So did the festivals help you as a producer? to find a distribution deal for the movie? For this particular movie, I think I think at that time when we started, the uh, Catalina was actually the, f the first uh, festival the Dawn played at. And I think at that time we had already um, signed with Vertical for domestic, for US and Canada. Um, yeah, yeah, two or three months before. And we had all, I believe we had also signed our international deal with uh, Kaleidoscope. Um, at that point too. 
Um, so in the case of the Don, it was just a, a bonus. It didn't actually help us find distribution. Um, but I, I know a number of people who have actually, uh, you know, who have met uh, sales agents and distributors through festivals, whether it's like, I, I know a lot of companies go to Sidges, um, a lot of companies go to the, you know, various festivals in LA and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, to get into the, the film markets. So you mentioned yeah. um, domestic uh, was vertical. So that's in the US. Did you sign yes. for Canada with, um, with vertical too? Uh, yeah, yeah. So vertical did the, uh, technically the distributor is, is vertical for US and Canada and they have an okay. output deal with Lionsgate for their physical for DVD. Um, and, and as we know, not a lot of movies will get a physical release these days. So we were lucky yeah. in, in that you know, they liked it enough to actually put it out. And it, I think it actually did better on, on DVD than it did in, in on video on demand, which um, is kind of par for the course with a lot of horror films because, you know, people yeah. uh, approach it from the mindset of a collector where they actually like to own the DVD. Um, which means in your case, that means the movie's good because when the movie's not yeah. good, people don't buy it on DVD because they read the reviews first. Right. Right, and then they troll That's you right. online, and you have to ignore that. But it's out there. You you have to ignore that because the most of the people who are going to criticize you online and leave a bad review, uh, they have the yeah. right not to like the movie. But most of them, they never made a movie, so they yeah. are just trying to troll you. I mean, let's not talk yeah. about that. Let's stay positive. So vertical, yeah, exactly. and you have for the um, for the international, it's uh, Kaleidoscope, correct? Yes, Kaleidoscope, uh, Spencer um, and his team in the UK. Um, so they, they handled the UK rights, which I um, mean includes United Kingdom, Ireland, and Scotland. And they're also the sales agent for International. So they've sold it to Russia, to Belarus, to South Africa, to Australia, and a few that I know I'm forgetting because it's hard to keep track of it sometimes. It is. What would you advise? What would be your advice for... Um independent filmmakers, emerging filmmakers who have maybe a first feature film and are yeah. wondering where to start uh, to find a distribution company. Uh, what would be, let's say, the first three steps to try and find the right um, push to get your movie out in the world? Right. Well, some of it kind of depends on, you know, what stage of production they're actually in, you know, whether they've, they're in pre-production writing development or it's actually finished um let's go from the guise of if it's finished um yep. because a lot of people will just take the plunge and and make a movie and then figure out how to market it later um not that Correct. i would advise that but uh, people are going to do what they're going to do and there's nothing wrong with that either. yeah um i would make sure that your poster uh, trailer your press pack everything is proper um, and I guess that's all three things right there, uh, because you have to really, you know, a lot of these companies, they, they see so many movies, so many movies come across their desks. They get so many emails, whether it's, you know, uh, from an acquisitions person, uh, intern that's looking for movies online. A lot of these companies are not going to watch your movie. Um, and I know that breaks a lot of people's hearts, especially if it's something that they're proud of. But it's really it's the same thing as you know, someone, people blind submitting screenplays, you know, no one, most people are not going to read your screenplay because they got 20 other emails from 20 other people and it takes three hours to read your screenplay. So you have to make sure your poster is eye catching your trailer um, conveys something strong about the story and, and you try to get press, try to get quotes, um, stills, anything that, is an impressive package that's actually going to catch their eye. And a lot of what we were talking about, about the, the way that the art, artwork is done, which, uh, you know, boils down to the use of color and different things that make it pop. Um, that's what you really got to go for because you could have the best acting in the world and they're not going to know or care because yeah. what's to differentiate that between your movie and 10 other movies that they're looking at any given hour of any day. And I would also add, you said the poster, the trailer, and the press. You have to make sure that the three of them are coherent with each other. Yes. You want the trailer yes. to be the exact same mood that your poster. And you want the press to echo the message you want to convey to the audience. So if exactly. everything is connected, a distribution company or a partner is going to see that and is going to say, oh, 
that's kind of ready for distribution. I have yeah. a good product and I, I already have the keys that are going to make me able as a distribution company or an aggregator to push it yeah. everywhere. And that's going to facilitate my job. So you want to facilitate the job of the people you're going to work with. Or even if they change the poster, if you show them what you have and what you've been able to create on your own, even if they change it, they may be, it may be good enough so they want to sign you. Yeah. Who was um, something the, uh, always, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I was going to say that something that's always good to do is actually you know, look at the new releases on, on VOD, on iTunes, on Voodoo, um, actually, especially those two, because the way that they break down their titles, you know, with, you know, in theaters now or, uh, new arrivals, um, independent spotlight, I think is one on voodoo, um, or no independent cinema, recent releases. And, you know, I, and I, I know that unfortunately the physical media sections and stores are narrowing, which is very sad, but, but, you know, go to Walmart, you know, wearing a mask. Um, go to Best Buy and, and look at the poster art that's that's out there now in the new releases. And, and what people do in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Get an ID uh, to see what's working in the market. What kind of product, uh, what does the product look like when they hit yeah. the, the, the space in Walmart uh, on Redbox and everything. So you're going to yes. know what the business is expecting right now. So that's yes, and I mean, I'm glad that you mentioned Redbox because Redbox is entirely artwork because you don't see movie trailers when you go and you know, absolutely, look at the absolutely, yeah. it's only the poster on, on the on the front of the machine, so you yeah. cannot see anything else. Who was in charge of the uh, distribution distribution strategy and sales pre sales in your own company at Jaguar? Um, Devaney, uh, my partner, actually is the one who pays the most attention to the market into market trends, you know, based on, you know, genre actors and, and things like that. Um, but it, it's not like we sit down for, you know, a week out of the year and say, oh, this is, this is what's hot right now. We actually try to pay attention, you know, 24, seven, 365 days a year. I mean, you have to, because things change so rapidly, you know, you have to always stay on top of it because you'll get left behind yeah. or you'll be, you know, just oblivious as to, you know, what the market trends are or anything else are because you really you have to sell your movie that's you know 90 percent of the movie business is actually sales yeah it is you want to be seen you want to be known you want people to know that you have a movie out uh, yeah. especially now everything is digital it's easy it's so easy to disappear into the into the flow of everything that's coming out you yeah. mentioned um press as one of the three pillars of what you need to be ready with before you go to distribution mm -hmm. or sales. Uh, who did you work with for the press? Because you had amazing coverage. You had Variety, you had Joe Blow, you had Deadline. You had you were almost everywhere with a mm -hmm. with an independent film. So how did you manage yeah. to achieve that? Um, that's something just is kind of uh, like second nature to, to us that we've been doing for years and years and years. Uh, forever ago, a couple of decades ago. I was uh, the front man of a, of a band, which you would call new metal. Um, and I, I had it like hammered into my head that you have to be able to promote yourself. And from there, I sort of devised a strategy where, you know, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll find, I'll find out who runs, you know, revolver magazine, who's the press agent for this and for that. And, and um, so years later, when I um, was in, film i uh i was originally an actor after i was a musician and i i just didn't trust managers and publicists and stuff like that and and because they wouldn't do anything for you you know uh people only work as hard as you know you will for yourself um so i applied what i learned doing music with uh to acting and eventually to production um so we we really spend a, a lot of time you know uh putting together press lists and developing relationships with people at deadline at variety at hollywood reporter and, and and other companies it's really it's really i guess hustling is the word you know you gotta you gotta hit the streets and, and make those connections um and sometimes it, it'll come across annoying and sometimes you feel a little silly doing it but until you have you know, the top tier uh, rep reps behind you, you really have to depend on yourself. 
you can't sit back and hope that some manager is going to do it all for you um, because, you know, more than likely they're just sitting back hitting submit on actors access, which you could do yourself, by the way, actors. I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, But you like I said, you really you really have to hustle, Um, make make the connections, make the relationships. That's the name of the game. And that's what we are trying to promote at the Paris Art and Movie Awards. The, the the mindset of do it yourself. At some point, yeah. if you're successful, you're going to have a team around you and people are going to help you and going to partner with you. But if you are able to develop with yourself another, another part of you that's an entrepreneur, you're going to yeah. be able to sell your film. You're going to be able to present your work to the world. And we need to do that as independent filmmakers right now. And you say sometimes it's challenging, but I think you are kind of a very good example of what it looks like when it works, because we are talking about the dawn, but it's not your only feature film and you have made several others. So where do you see yourself in five years, what's kind of the goal for the company and for you as a director? That's an interesting question because the past year has obviously been challenging, you know, not just for me, but for a number of people. Uh, Myself and and other colleagues have all had films that were ready to go a year ago that were abruptly canceled once uh, the pandemic became something that was very real. Um, Yeah. A lot of a lot of things were either put on hold, but a lot of movies were just canceled outright completely. Um, but hopefully we can all come back and barring that in five years, I think it's just a matter of, you know, continuing to step up. Every movie should be better. Every movie should be able to attract, you know, new new talent, different actors that we haven't worked with. Um, so I, I, you know, a few years ago when we started, Uh, producing um, on our own um, and I had actually quit acting Devon still acts here and there our first movie that we really seriously tackled called the Black Dahlia Haunting cost two thousand dollars and you know like you're saying we just had to market it the best that we could in order to get new opportunities so you know I'd love to say hey in five years I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 6 um, but, um, <laughs> I think the, the most that we can realistically hope for is just to continue continuing to do better and to do, uh, bigger projects and, uh, hopefully people in every time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I really, I really like your mindset as pretty close to mine. Actually, ne- each yeah. movie is get, has to be kind of the next level achievement for yourself. Yes. And if you're yes. able to go the next step, then next time you're going to go to the next step. And the more you're going to go, you're going to climb the ladder. Right. And, and the more and you, you have do, to learn with each one. You, you know, there's, there's sometimes, you know, the next movie you make may not be your best, but you have to, you know, look at it and, you know, kind of step outside of yourself and know why it may have been disappointing to you um, and learn from that. Um, or, if you, or if there's this great scene you didn't get to put in a movie, don't hold on to that forever. I see so many people that focus on, you know, this the one film that they're doing right now. They don't know that, hey, I didn't get to do that car chase. Maybe I can two movies from now. You know, it's it's yeah. every movie. Hopefully, it's not the last movie you make. Hopefully, that's it. And that's also you are a great guest. <laughs> you are a great guest. <laughs> uh, that's also one thing we say every year at the Paris Auto Movie Award. We say we are very happy to have your movie and to have you right now. But we want you to make another film and we want you to come back next year and or in two years with another film because we know that it's hard to make a movie when you don't have enough money or when you don't have all the means that the big studios have. But doing one is challenging. Doing another one is such an achievement. And then a third one and then a fourth one, you are building a catalog, you are building a brand, you are building your skills. And that's exactly, I think, the mindset. Moreover, now with the pandemic and everything, people who do, who do it, who are practitioners, who are executing strategies and creating, they are going to stand out when everything is kind of come, come back to some sort of normalcy. 
So yeah, absolutely. what's your, what's your next uh, project? And um, is it going to be uh, another, another genre film or not at all? Or it's going to be a Christmas movie or is it going to be a romantic <laughs> comedy or a documentary? I mean, maybe I it should be a Christmas movie. Those make a lot of money. Um, yeah. our, our next one, we, we just signed a deal for a couple of weeks ago. Um, I can't really talk about it yet. Um, but something I've noticed that I do is we tend to go back and forth or I do between a movie that's a little more serious and a movie that's a little more popcorn. Um, the Dawn was a more serious movie. Before that, we did a movie called Crossbreed, which was an action sci-fi movie, which was basically Predator in Space, which is more of a popcorn movie. And then I had mentioned I did a movie for hire called Attack of the Unknown, which is another popcorn movie. So the next movie is more in line with The Dawn. It's more of a character okay. study, uh, more of a thriller. No explosions, at least not yet. <laughs> at least not yet. Yeah. You've been a musician. You've been an actor. You are a director, a producer, a script writer. What would be your favorite position? Or how do you define yourself when you meet someone for the first time that you want to work with? Um, right now, I say director. In the past, um, my mid-20s, when I did music, I was a musician. Even though I had went to school for screenwriting and acting, I ended up taking a detour. And that was something I very much enjoyed. And I love the crowds. I love the connection with people. I, I don't know if I could do that now. I'm obviously a different person 20 years later than I was then. Sure. Um, I, 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 I produce only really for myself out of necessity. Um, uh, writing is kind of the same way. If there's something I'm really passionate about or feel that I can tell it best, then I'll write. Otherwise, I'll, otherwise we'll have uh, collaborators or or ha outsource, you know, the screen the script to someone else uh, based on a treatment. Um, I, I would love just to be able to direct and oversee things like post production and and the script, but have the right team around me that I can really trust. Um, Devaney, obviously, I trust as a producer. Um, and there's certain people I trust, you know, as directors of photography. And there's relationships I've been building with writers and with, uh, you know, composers and, and other people. So I'd love to just say, long very long story short, um, I'm a director and I have a badass team around. Me. Yeah, that's dream team, dream works. It's... Uh, I Once again, something I can really uh, recognize myself in. Uh, do you think in the future with with um, upcoming movies you're going to have, you're going to use film festivals again as maybe a boost of marketing or marketing tools yeah. to have more elements to add to your package when you go to, to sell the film? I think it really depends on the movie. Um, some movies are more at home at festivals. And actually the one that we just signed... Uh, yeah deal with the executive producer has mentioned that he thinks it would be a great festival film um some of them uh like some of the action movies i've done those i think those are better served you know going directly to consumer there's not a lot of action festivals there are some good ones um but um i think it it really depends on the movie and what the best type of audience it is you're going to get different audiences at different festivals so i guess we'll see Makes sense. Uh, it's funny you say that because we just had an action film win the Hollywood Art and Movie Awards, which is the um, we have the Paris Art and Movie Awards in Paris, and we have the Small Brother in Hollywood, the Hollywood Art and Movie Awards. And this one in Hollywood, we just had a movie with Scott Atkins, and he mm -hmm. won. Let me let me be correct here. They won Best Feature Film, like what, a week uh, what movie, with us. What movie is it? It's Legacy of Lies. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know it's anyone the, in that one. Um, it's a Lionsgate so, uh, movie. Yeah. They sold it to Lionsgate. Uh, the production company is in the UK. Yeah. And uh, we had the director and the whole cast for a, a panel that was quite amazing. Uh, but yeah. it's interesting, again, once again, what you say, because they submitted to film festivals because yeah. it's a little bit, it's a traditional action film, but there is a um, heavy sense of drama inside of it. The relationships yeah. between the characters a sense of family, a sense of loyalty, all the values in the film are pretty strong. And that's why they felt the script 
of the action film made a good enough action film so they would submit to film festivals yeah. so you're I right on the someone film. who is um oh i'm sorry um i, I was gonna say i know scott is someone who has uh taken more in of an interest in uh the producing side of his films the last few years and his work has gotten better and better um there's a couple yeah. of films he did that directed by and co-starring a friend of mine named Louis Mandalore called the, the Debt Collector, uh, part one and part two, that are just fantastic. And they're both lower budget action films. But like you're saying, there's a there's a real you, you really feel the relationships between the characters and it transcends yeah. just being a normal action movie. And there's an honesty about these movies. Uh yeah. Action films in the 90s used to be big machines for yeah. entertainment, a pop popcorn movies. Yeah. After, let's say, to be very simplistic, after John Wick, they kind of reinvented, and Jason Bourne, the Bourne identity, mm -hmm. they kind of reinvented the action films with a more documentary, very uh, gritty style. And that fits very well with greedy scripts, with struggling characters that have backstory that could be very, that can be very dark, and uh, that's why I hope we're going to have a new generation of action films that are going to be a little bit more interesting than the one we had in the two thousands. Yeah, you um, you know, there, there's certain ways to make people care about the action. And I, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of movies that are banked just on, you know, a, an actor's name. And there's not a lot of thought really put into the scripts. But, yeah. you know, no matter how great the action is done in some of these, if you don't care about what's happening, then it kind of defeats the purpose. And I think that's something that, that guys like Scott and Lewis and, and, and other people, Michael J. White is another one who they, they see, yeah. they, they want something else, some other type of substance in these because it just makes them a thousand times better. Yeah. Because you just want for an action film as any drama or any festival film, you just want to, you just want the guys to tell you a story. If the story yeah. doesn't compel you, you're just gonna switch channels and or watch something else. So if you don't care uh, about who's throwing the punch, then what does it matter? It doesn't. Yeah, it's totally mm -hmm. right. Cool. It was a pleasure to have you for the number eight episode of Spotlight. I think it was very interesting. Uh, the tips you share, the view you have, and the mindset you have of. Uh, let's say the DIY, do it yourself, and then build a team around you to work with you and create the best film you can. I really uh, appreciate that. And that's one of the things we are looking for in movies at the festival, at the Paris Art and Movie Awards. We want to see movies that have a story to tell. We want to care about the characters. We want to care about the movies. Because if not, well, what's the point so it was it was a real pleasure to have you thank you so much for taking the time and for sharing all that with us definitely thank you very much for having me on this was great perfect i hope you're gonna have a great rest of your day uh go back to your office where everybody is gonna bother you <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh i hope we'll uh, we'll be in touch and we're gonna see you again soon definitely definitely i hope so thank you so much bye-bye all right take care